Back with us on the Sports Mag Zone, we continue with football. After a two-year break due to the pandemic, professional top-flight football has returned to Trinidad and Tobago. The 10-team Ascension Football Tournament got underway last week at the La Horqueta Recreation Ground. Two of the five games on opening weekend were carried live right here on Sports Max, the host broadcaster of the competition. We are pleased today to be joined by Tournament Director Kyron Edwards. Kyron, welcome to the Sports Max Zone. It's a pleasure being on the zone and seeing, talking with you to all the viewers. It's a pleasure being here. Excellent. So you've had the pleasure, you and your team, I'm sure, of looking back at how well opening weekend went. How did that turn out for you? I think it was excellent. The amount of courses that would have attended the matches live, I think it was a surprise for us with the DC and those strong here. Um, we're expecting a large turnout again this week. Um, and we need to know the restrictions be relaxed from the court. Um, we're expecting a, a very huge turnout at all the matches. Yeah, I know that the some of the teams, Kyron, would have had players in camp with Angus Eves, Soka Warriors, doing that, playing in that very important tournament with Guyana and Barbados. So a lot of the teams would have lost some, some key pieces. Uh, are, are those players back with their respective clubs? And do you expect the quality of football with those players back to, to be enhanced this round? Um, yeah, we, we, we all players are back with their clubs, uh, respective clubs. Before, even before the games, they would have had a training camp with the national team where some of the players would have been taking part in, in that camp as well. So um, I think all teams would get a boost coming out of the, the international break. And we're expecting, and as, as everybody would know, we're expecting a better show um, from this week going forward. Um, but I, I think even when the players going on national break or national duty, the level of football was surprisingly high for the opening week. Yeah, in, in terms of the fun, the, the, the appetite for the game to come back, I, I want you to tell me, you said that you and your colleagues were pleasantly surprised with the quality, with the, with, with the, the extent of the turnout. So given the appetite for the games before opening weekend, and then you measure it against what you actually saw, what is it that you think compelled the fans to come out? Just the fact that they were able to go to live sports or the fact that they were able to see top-class football specifically once again? And I think the, the, the excitement behind professional football is always there. Um, what we would have been able to do in terms of, of merging the entertainment aspect with the football. I think Karen's Karen's connection has frozen for the minute. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to get him back. But Lance, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I transmitted messages from maybe two or three different Jamaica Premier League clubs, executives. Kyron is back with us? Yes. Yes, yes Kyron. Right. You, 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 you were explaining to me, Kyron, about the expectation of fan support before the opening weekend. And then based on your post-evaluation, you were talking about marrying the entertainment aspect of the football. Yeah, um, in the first, in the first um, of the league, we would have given a tease in terms of what we, we wanted to do in terms of entertainment with football. Um, and when we showcased the, the tournament at this time, I think fans were excited and really seeing what it would, would, would evolve to. Um, and I think they, they, they won't let down in terms of the showcase that they got at the opening night. Um, and we expect that to carry on through the tournament. One question that was asked of me, uh, Kyron, by an executive of one of the top football clubs in Jamaica. I got a message. George, how come is it? She, she said she was watching the Ascension League and she was very impressed. She said, George, how come there are no sponsors' names on the jerseys? And I said, well, I'm going to have to ask my friends down in TNT and get back to you. I'm asking you now, what, what explains that? Um, it's, it's, it's a normal practice for clubs to, to engage sponsors individually. Um, and due to the, the, the pandemic, most of the sponsors would have, would have taken a, a, somewhat of a large break if they don't turn and, and they shut down. So it, it, I believe once they, they see what the teams are doing, I think which it may be the first month, teams would regain their sponsorship and, and they would start to see sponsors on, on, on t-shirts soon. 
Uh, but it's something that we are working on. We are working with all the clubs. We are working with stakeholders and corporate and getting sponsors on board with the tournament and with the clubs that help support the clubs. Yeah, of course, this is a way of uh, the livelihood, supporting the livelihood of these players, uh, Chiron. So uh, tell me about the, the prize money that is on offer in the competition. And are there bonuses for leading goal scorer by, say, after 10 rounds or at the end of the competition, clean sheets? Are there uh, prizes along the way for the teams and a bonanza at the end for the champion team and maybe even the runner-up? So, so the, the prize money we offer is two hundred and fifty thousand from first to third, and we have some more scores. We have MVPs, monthly MVPs, um, and the we see the long MVP. We also bring in on a sponsor soon to go to do weekly MVPs for every match, where they will be giving some prize money to, to help assist in the, the more standout players. So we are, we are working on getting corporate that fully involved. With the tournament, um, it was one that was, it was it not just stuff and go since 2010. Since 2020, we have been working on getting the tournament started. Um, and sponsors will be starting in 2020. Then we have to stop. We started in 2021. We had to stop. So sponsors will kind of wait and see. Let's see if the tournament would really kick off this time. And now we are getting phone calls from sponsors wanting to be part of the tournament, so especially coming out of the opening round. Excellent. Well, Karen, we wish you all the best. Of course, we are the host broadcasters. We are your partners. So we'll do what we can to drive interest in the league, not just in TNT, but outside. In the same way that the Jamaica Premier League is popular right throughout the Caribbean, we hope the Ascension Football Tournament gets there as well. And uh, after a very encouraging opening week, we hope that it only gets stronger as the rounds go by. All the best to you. We'll talk again. Thanks, George. Good, good, good. Karen Edwards there, he is uh, the man in charge of the Ascension Football Tournament. Yeah, Lance, yeah. I was telling you the story mm -hmm. that about three executives messaged me to say, George, the thing looked good. Yes. The, 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 of course, they were impressed by, you know what they were impressed for, by, the, by, by most? The surfaces. Yes. And I'm saying, well, those are the... Which we have spoken about. Playing surfaces in T TNT are 39 times better than what we have in Jamaica. That's a fact. Yes. So they were impressed by the, the, the surfaces and the turnout there was, and the quality of football. They were saying, but the standard was good. So I think three different clubs, corporate area clubs, were saying, people were saying to me mm -hmm. that I should pass on the word, that they're impressed by what they're seeing with the, with the Ascension Football Tournament. Yeah, one, one, one coach actually said to me that this is, in effect, competition for the Jamaica Premier yes. League to people looking on outside. Yes. And, and he was accepting that, you know, the, the, the Ascension League was looking good. And there were no scoreless matches in last no. weekend's game um, games. And people like to see goals. There was a 4-1 result in one of the games. And of the five matches, I think 13 goals were scored. So it was a very good start last weekend. Yeah, I, I, like, I like defense force. So let's see what they can do for me this season. So <laughs> congratulations to the team, the Sportsmax team down in TNT, led by Kerry Gibbons, for the job they did with round one. And we hope that the standard can get only better for these subsequent rounds. So live on Sportsmax 2, Deportivo are playing AC Port of Spain at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. EDT. This is a live look-in. We're giving it to you. 1-1, one, one, so no scoreless games. As Lance said, they're in the 50th minute, and it's one all there. And Defence Force, a team I'm bringing this season, I really hope they don't flop. They'll tackle Terminix La Horqueta Rangers in the late game. But live look-in here, 1-1. One, one. And look at the feelings. And it's not a big feeling, it's just a regular feeling, TNT. Look how it look good. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we take a break. Back with more of the Sports Bank Zone.